I've been talking recently about the seven churches in Revelation, and we've got through all the seven churches, and I hope you remember at least part of it, but I'm just going to remind you, and I'm sure you remember this, that what Jesus wants, it was, the whole overall title was the church that Jesus wants. The church that Jesus wants is called Philadelphia, and Philadelphia means brotherly love. And so we need to constantly work at that. Even if we have brotherly love, Paul said, I know that you love one another. I want you to do it more and more. So more and more love. That can't be a bad thing. And I think it's wonderful that the church that Jesus wants is full of brotherly love. And in the world, um, well, in the church sometimes, we can experience anxiety and uh, we're looking at each other, comparing ourselves with each other instead of submitting ourselves to one another, which is kingdom of God is opposite in many respects. Today, Narita and I were reading a passage and it really struck me because we all hear about that we should forgive someone 70 times 7. You know that one. But in Luke, it also says that if someone sins against you, if your brother, somebody close to you, sins against you, seven times that day, you should forgive him seven times in that day. And I, I'd forgotten that one. <laughs> seven times in one day. So what that tells me as well is that God is very forgiving. Amen. And that should release us. Because sometimes we think, oh, you know, I can never be good enough. That's quite true, but Jesus paid the price on the cross. We, you know, we know all that, but it, sometimes the enemy attacks us and was, makes us feel so bad. But if, if we're supposed to forgive each other seven times in a day, even if they come and sin again, you still say sorry, and they come and do it again, then God obviously is a very forgiving God as well, because that's a reflection of how God loves us doesn't mean to say we want to sin or we will try to, quite the opposite. But God loves us so much that he will forgive us seven times in one day. How's that sound? So we can feel free. We can all feel free and don't have to judge each other either. Just forgive each other and love each other. And I think that's wonderful. Wonderful God that we have, isn't it? So that was Philadelphia. And now we've gone through the seven churches and seen how Jesus loves the church that is full of brotherly love. Now we've got to Revelation chapter 4, which has gone past this foundational thing, which we should never forget, the foundation of the love for one another. And we're going on now, and we're going to have, we're going to gaze into heaven. Because after that, they said, after this I looked, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. Now, I want you and I to look into heaven now. And it's so important, really. Why should this come immediately after we hear about the church that Jesus wants? It must be because the most important thing is to really have a heavenly mind. A heavenly mind so that we're great use on earth. I'm counteracting a phrase that says very often, he's so heavenly minded, he's no earthly use. Well, I think we need to be very heavenly minded to be of earthly use because that's where all people are going to the grave at some stage. And, and if we believe in Jesus, that's where we're going. So let's have a vision of heaven. You won't close your eyes and listen if you like, but if you read it, then just visualize it. I'm not going to try and interpret too much of what's said here, but we're going to sing. And you were worried about that, weren't you? We always sing when I speak. We're going to sing, and we're going to sing a song because it comes up in this chapter. Actually, there are two songs for the chapter, but we may not get through both. I'm going to have my eye on the watch to make sure you don't fall asleep. Now, let's pray first. Father, we pray that you would really speak to us and envision us with heaven, Lord, and make us really see where we're going and what's going on there. And, and the prayer that you asked us to pray was, as in heaven, so on earth. Lord, we want to be doing on earth as they do in heaven. 
So we just pray, Father, for today will be a new phase for all of us where we will individually and as a church just be more heavenly minded, more aware, Lord, of what eternity is. Help us, Lord. You've put this wonderful scripture so that we can understand a bit about what's going on in heaven. Just open our eyes, Lord, and help us, Lord, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to read it out, and I'm not going to interpret too much of this, but we're going to sing the song. Because I, when I looked at, as you do when you prepare to speak, you look at different people, what they've said, listen to a video about it, and so on and so forth. And I spent a long time doing this. And uh, people are actually just... The, well, you'll see that the vision here is exactly what they're saying. They just repeat it. But I think the main thing that we want to do here is just visualise... So as we look at this, let's visualise and see. And it says, After this I looked, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. And the voice I heard at first speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. And at once I was in the Spirit. And there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. And the one who sat there had the appearance of jasper and ruby. That's a beautiful picture. And of course, Jesus is, that's why letters are read, because Jesus was the one who's calling up. And he was in the spirit. It's wonderful to try and be in the spirit so that we can have vision. And we need to really get into the spirit, or at all times really, walking in the spirit, so that we can have a heavenly walk as we're moving forward. And we should come, we should come up to heaven as often as we can, really, in our minds, you know, have a vision of heaven. So the next bit says, A rainbow that shone like an emerald encircled the throne. Surrounding the throne were 24 other thrones, and seated on them were 24 elders. They were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings and peals of thunder. In front of the throne, seven lamps were blazing. These are the seven spirits of God. And also in front of the throne, there was what looked like a sea of glass, clear as crystal. So are you trying to visualise this? It's a beautiful image, isn't it? And it's almost everything thrown into this imagery, isn't it? And also sound, too. You've got lightnings, rumblings, peelings of thunder. If you want to see videos on this, there are plenty of them. But it's beautiful. And I think I just want us to be captivated by, by this throne. The rainbow shone like an emerald. You'll see pictures of this. And uh, rainbows, funnily enough, are all colours, aren't they? And emerald's green. So it's obviously... It's imagery, it's something we need to really get into. If you study this, there's no end to studying it. And that's good, because it's good to study Revelation. And as you can see, I'm not really interpreting it. I'm trying to just, to just get us to make sure we see this beautiful picture of Jesus sitting on the throne and everything that's surrounding him. At 24 is a picture of, you know, the 12 tribes of Israel, the... The, and, and then there's, there's 12 elders as well. Now, as I say, you can read lots of interpretations of this, but 24 is a heavenly number. It's uh, obviously, it's representing us, basically. And we are there with Jesus. And it says that we will rule and reign with him, doesn't it? So it's imagery. And not necessarily to be taken literally, but it may be literal. We have to be careful here, because we don't know what's literal and what isn't. It's deliberately as it were, hidden and revealed and hidden and revealed, so that we will keep seeking him. I love to keep seeking the Lord. I love Revelation because the more I read it, the more I think I don't know very much. And uh, the more it makes me also really fearful in the right way. We should fear God. The Bible tells us to fear God. That doesn't mean the kind of fear that you have when you're on a great height and you look down and, uh, you know, you're fearing falling. We're mostly afraid of heights, which is a good fear, isn't it? But it's a good fear to fear God, to fear uh, that we, you know, to know that we don't want to make a mistake in our lives. And that's a good fear. Not that we should be bound up by the enemy accusing us, but that we should try to serve God as much as we possibly can, to really be 
uh, you know, every day, all day long, fearful of the Lord, trying to serve him, trying to do what he wants us to do and trying to avoid what he doesn't want us to do. But I like to be positive because the more you're positive, the more you won't do the things he doesn't want you to do. So let's get involved in building the church, making the kingdom grow, being baptised, if you haven't been baptised already, that's, a fee, that's a, what's going to happen next week. Because baptism is something which every Christian is commanded to do. And we do it because we want to as well. We want to show the world and we want to show the heavenly places that we belong to Jesus. And we, we are going to be with him in heaven. We want all the principalities and powers to know that. And we want everyone to know that. 100% identification with Jesus. We want people at school to know that we're Christians. I did a bit of a pause there because it's difficult. It's a battle. I remember when I was at school, nobody, there were presumably lots of Christians around me, but I can't remember anyone who came to me and said, what do you think about Jesus? Or I'm a Christian. Because the enemy stops people saying it. Eventually... I was uh, invited to a Christian meeting. But the first person that actually challenged me one-to-one, -one, actually the second, uh, was at university. And he said, what do you think about Jesus? We really do. I'm praying that I will be bolder to challenge people. Well, perhaps not challenge them, just say, what do you think about Jesus? Just ask them a question. Because it's what people think about Jesus that determines whether they are going to be with him forever or not. It's whether they believe in him or not. It's a black and white that Jesus, this isn't my words, and I'm sure you know, Jesus said it's black and white. You either believe in him and you're with him forever, or you don't believe in him and you're without him forever. And he puts it more strongly than that, as you know. And Matthew 25, which I've referred to a lot, separate, Jesus separates the sheep from the goats. And the sheep are the ones that love one another, basically, that do acts of love, feeding the poor, blessing people, visiting them. And it's those things that mark out that we're Christians. It's the quality of the things that count, not the quantity. So if you and I are going to visit somebody we need to really do it as much love as we can, as much serving them, as much treating them as greater than ourselves as we possibly can. It's the quality of the love that counts. So important that. Otherwise you might get frantic and think you've got to run around all day long. Well, we should be full of good works. That the Bible says full of good works, we should be. But it doesn't mean to say we've got to be frantic and anxious, no. We do quality works. If we're talking to someone in the congregation, someone who we knock on their door and say, hi, we're from Rivers of Life Church. We'd like to get to know you. Tell us about yourself, whatever you might say. It's the quality of it. It's because we really love people. It's because we submit to them. It's because we don't rec reckon ourselves as greater than them. It's the quality of our love that Jesus is looking for and the quantity, but don't get too fixed up with how much, many things we do. Let's, as it's very clear from scripture, let's focus on the quality of our love. Amen? It's quite a challenge, isn't it, really? And we often have to say, Father, forgive me, but we can say that seven times a day, and he'll forgive us, or 70 times seven, and he'll forgive us. Amen? Are you with me? I'm loving looking into this revelation here. Now, interestingly, we've got one more bit before the song. So let's read this. There's a bit more of a vision here. In the centre around the throne were four living creatures, and they were covered with eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion. The second was like an ox. The third has the face of a man. And the fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all round, even under the wings. What impresses me here, and probably you too, is the number of eyes. 
So if you're trying to draw, draw a picture of this, you've got to have eyes all over them, under the wings, above the wings, all sides. And why, what are eyes for? Seeing. Not necessarily for judging. We also must be, we're terrible, aren't we? The enemy has painted a picture of God as such a judging, which he is. But for Christians, he's a loving God. He's a father. And it's to look after us. The eyes are set to, to look after us, to watch over us, to make sure that we're okay. Isn't that nice? But the eyes are there so that we, to care for us. Full of eyes, these creatures. And the imagery, again, is difficult to interpret, though we would no normally, people say, like a lion, we know that's strength and ruling as well. Lions rule, don't they? The lion and the lamb. Jesus is a lion and he's also meek, like a lamb. An ox. An ox signifies in the Bible strength and and work and purpose. The third had the face like a man. We sometimes forget that we're made in the image of God. You and I look like God. I don't mean physically. I don't mean that God will be, have a physical face like us. I don't know what it will look like. We don't know what, he can come in various forms basically. He can be a lion, he can be a lamb, he can be a human being. But we are created in the image of God to be like God. Isn't that lovely? And the flying eagle. I think that, you know, we hear in, in the Isaiah, it talks about they shall mount up with wings as, like eagles. They shall run and never faint. So an eagle is obviously something you can soar above the circumstances. Isn't that lovely? You, can, you and I can soar above things. So these living creatures even under the wings. And then what did they do? And this is our song. Because they said, actually, interestingly, but I checked the word said, and it can be singing as well, though it actually does say they never stop saying. Day and night, they never stop saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Now, what does it say here? They never stop saying. This is a very repetitive chorus. And you know that we love the long, we love the beautiful hymns, we love the, the, the modern songs that, that we sung today, some beautiful songs which have very meaningful and long words. And we also need to love the never stop saying type songs, the holy, holy, holy songs, the, uh, and the hallelujah songs, because they're really important. And in heaven, we're going to find lots of them, actually. And why are they important? They lift your spirit. And somebody said to me, we've got a multinational church here. And some of these long songs, it takes somebody who doesn't naturally speak English a long time to work the song out. And it's hard for them to enter in sometimes. Interesting. I want to encourage you, if you don't speak English, try and learn the old, learn the nice songs and play them lots of times in English and that will help you to learn them. So when you come and sing with us, we, we can all sing knowing the songs really well. Uh, what I often do, and when we were in Exeter, we heard some lovely new songs I didn't know, so I photographed the song just to look it up and listen to it and uh, possibly we could sing it too. There's some wonderful new songs, aren't there? Some wonderful old songs, but there's some absolutely wonderful new songs. I'm calling on the God of Jacob. It's one of the ones that made me cry. It almost does now. You know, he's the same God who can help us today. Songs like that are so spiritually minded. They're so beautiful, aren't they? This one is a repetitive song. Day and night, they never stop saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Would you like to say that with me? Day and night, they never stop saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And you guessed it, we're going to sing it as well. I don't know why, but every time I speak these days, I have a song. I'm so sorry about that. If you don't like songs, I really do apologise, but you've got to forgive me seven times today. Day and night, they never stop saying, holy, holy, holy 
It's the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come day and night. They never stop saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come day and night. They never stop saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come day and night. They never stop saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. You get the idea? Yeah. I'm going to embarrass one or two people now. Uh, Steve, can you come up, please? And Narita, my long-suffering wife, can you come up? And Lorna has disappeared. She knew, oh, no, she hasn't. She's here. Uh, right, Steve's going to help with the men's side. And, and Lorna and Narita are going to help with the ladies' side. Okay. Now, first of all, ladies, uh, we'll, we'll, yeah, yeah, okay, yes. We rehearsed this at breakfast time. We have breakfast together, by the way, um, which is very nice. And we rehearsed it, and it's a bit under-rehearsed, isn't it? So what we're going to do is that we let you two, we let the ladies sing on your own without the men just now, and then we're going to do what you said, which is, if you just sing without us, just ladies without us. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> It's good to have Lorna around. She always corrects me, <laughs> <laughs> which is good. And that's, that's very positive. So, right, so we're going to sing all men and women together. And then, then what's going to happen is the men are going to start and the ladies are going to follow. So if you want to know what to sing, ladies, just listen to the previous bit that came and you'll get it. So let's, uh, we're going to do one time through with everyone together. And then the second time... It was just for the men, and the ladies will sing with Narita and Lorna, okay? Day and night, they never stop saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is, and it... Just the men now. Day and night, they never stop saying, who holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come in day and night. They never stop saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come day and night they never stop saying holy 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 is the lord god almighty who was and is and is to come day and night they never stop saying holy 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 is the lord god almighty who was and is and is to come last time men day and night they never stop saying holy 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 is the lord god almighty who was and is and is to come very good well well done ladies that's so excellent <laughs> now it's actually written for four parts round but I don't think we'll try four parts this morning that would be a bit too ambitious uh, maybe a later date but you get the idea that the repetitive song is a beautiful thing as well as the very kind of like wordy meaningful ones and we're going to sing more repetitive songs we won't stop singing the other ones. I think, isn't it great, the kingdom of God? We've got such variety. We've got such wonderful things to do. 
So what I'm going to encourage you to do is, uh, if you don't speak English um, and you find the long, difficult songs difficult and long, then make a huge effort to learn them. And then when, you, when we sing them, uh, you'll be able to sing with us. And if you don't like the repetitive songs, change your heart, because <laughs> in heaven there's going to be lots of repetitive songs. And we have to get used to it on earth. As in heaven, so on earth. Now, it's very important. Uh, there's something special about just singing something which we can all sing easily together and, and just love God with it, really. It's wonderful, isn't it? Then after that song, this happens. Whenever the living creatures give glory, honour and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fell down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, you can say with me, you are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honour and power. For you created all things and for pleasure they were made. I've just changed the last line a bit there. It, the, the authorised version says, and for his pleasure, that's for God's pleasure. But doing a bit of research, it's for pleasure. And I just found that interesting and wonderful to know that God made all things so that we can enjoy them and so that he can enjoy them. I mean, isn't the enemy a scoundrel and horrible and nasty because he tries to cut out the enjoyment which we're supposed to have from everything and from each other and for loving one another. The whole thing is done for his pleasure but also for our pleasure, because what gives God the most pleasure? What gives the father the most pleasure? To see their children happy and enjoying themselves, or their grandchildren, if you've got some. Seeing them enjoying themselves is great, great pleasure. And God looks at us, and when he sees us enjoying ourselves, that's what gives him pleasure. Not when he sees us keeping all the rules. I mean, if you're children are feeling all the time they've got all these rules to keep and that's what they have to do in life that's that's restricting them isn't it god wants us to be free if the sun shall set you free you shall be free indeed i want to be free indeed and we're all the same we all get in the enemy is accusing day and night and in revelation you'll see as we look on how many, how much the enemy is accusing and deceiving all the time, he's deceiving the whole of mankind, according to Revelation, all the time. And that's what his job is. His job is to bring deception in. Look at the world today. Look at how many leaders there are who deceive the people. They're terrible. I'm not going to mention names because you're probably thinking them anyway. Why? We know why, because if we read Revelation, we find out why. I want to encourage you, and I'm going to finish now, I want to encourage you to read Revelation, or listen to it. I, I go to sleep listening to Revelation. Louisa said, how long have you been asleep when I had my afternoon rest yesterday? Well, I, I, went, I started at Revelation 1 and woke up at Revelation 17 or 18 or 19. So it must have been quite a long sleep. <laughs> But I just love doing that because I wake up and if I wake up I'm hearing something nice in the background. I'm, you might think I'm eccentric and you don't, well yeah, I am eccentric, but you don't want to copy me. Fair enough. I don't say that anyone should copy me, copy Jesus. Amen. Copy Jesus. Don't copy each other. Do, do your own thing. You remember the, um, I lifted up, uh, I've, got it, I've got it there but I won't bring it out. Uh, the Nobel Prize medal that people get for doing their unique thing. You've got your unique thing. Don't copy me. You do your unique thing that Jesus loves. Jesus loves you uniquely. Jesus loves me uniquely. Find out what it is that he loves uniquely about you. That could take a long time. It could be a lifetime finding out what it is that Jesus loves about you uniquely. You're thinking that he hates so many things about me. No, he's your loving father. He doesn't hate you. He loves you. Is that good news? Amen. Amen. We'll look at uh, Revelation 5 next and uh, see what we can find out from Revelation 5 and the rest of Revelation too. Um, so thank you so much for listening and God bless you all.